We gather this evening in a spirit of great welcome for all. Our celebration begins in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Jesus tells us that unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Like grains of wheat, you and I are called to die to self in order to advance the common good for the times we have forgotten about others and for all our sins. We ask mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in the same charity with which out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives, who reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers the day I took them by the hand and led them forth to the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All, from least to greatest, shall know me, says the Lord. For I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord.
reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. He was also, he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. Uh, reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen. Amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it to eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me where I am, there my servant will be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? But it was for this very purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder, but others said, an angel has spoken to him. And Jesus answered and said, this voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment for this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this, indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord.
<clears throat> the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. This is good news because a people then divided would become united. This is almost unbelievably good news because this new covenant is promised to a people who showed themselves to be unfaithful sinners. The prophet does not tell us that they have reformed or even that they have repented. It would make no sense except for the fact that this new covenant is all about God's mercy. God will forgive with the hope that this new covenant, written not in stone but on the people's hearts, will transform them, heal them by the grace of reconciliation. This new covenant finally came in Christ Jesus. In his death and resurrection, followed by an outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the first disciples. This new covenant in Jesus Christ fulfills not only the prophecy of Jeremiah, but also the hope of the psalmist. Have mercy on me, thoroughly wash me from my guilt. A clean heart create for me, O God and I will teach your ways. Philip, the apostle, together with Andrew, addressed Jesus, the bearer of this new covenant, with a request from some Greeks. They asked Philip, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. At this, as the Gospel according to John relates, Jesus presents a lengthy discourse on his coming passion because to see Jesus is to see him with eyes of faith, faith in his life, death, and resurrection. Eyes of faith will see and understand a seminal teaching of Jesus. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the earth and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Most clearly, Jesus is that grain of wheat that dies. And its fruit is the endurance of the Christian community. You and I are to consider ourselves as grains of wheat, too. So if we go through life as exclusively self-interested people, who are so blind to the plight of others that we do not use our God-given gifts and blessings to serve them, then we are like the grain of wheat that remains just a grain of wheat. However, if we go through life freely using our God-given gifts and blessings, as we behold the plight of other people, then we are like that grain of wheat that dies, spending our inexhaustible blessings, producing much fruit. And that fruit 
is the advancement of the common good. Giving other people the same decent chance we have to use God's gifts and blessings to become the very people they have been created and blessed to be. Why do this? Why not let everybody take care of themselves? Can't everybody use their God-given gifts and blessings to become the people God has created them to be? No. The answer is no. They cannot. Because it is very difficult, if possible at all, for anyone to do this. If most of their life is spent hungry, sick, running for cover, without shelter, when each day's goal is just getting over, trying to make it to a tomorrow which has a slim chance, if any, of being any different from the misery that is today. Worthy of our efforts to advance the common good include not only people trapped in generational poverty or living far away under tyrannical regimes, struggling literally to stay alive. Also worthy of our efforts are people who seem to blend in quite well, seem to in the world we know, but who are discounted, disregarded, disenfranchised or disempowered in any number of ways. These are not a few. These include women whose worth is literally discounted in the workplace as they receive unequal wages for the same work as men, yet who still manage to put many cracks in the glass ceilings that have held them back for so long. These include young people, or not so young, who struggle to figure out how they're put together particularly, for example, in the LGBTQ community. This includes people of racial and ethnic groups whose political voice is divided and diminished by gerrymandering of election district maps. This includes people who are unjustly painted with a broad brush of disapproval because of the bad actions of only a few in their line of work, particularly of late police officers. This includes people who struggle with mental illnesses, who are at times dismissed as though beyond hope because, well, they're mentally ill. Many homeless people are included among those with mental illnesses. If you or I were living on the street for long enough, we'd be mentally ill too. In order to advance the common good, to do some good for all who are so challenged, that they may be people who grow to full stature according to their blessings, people far away and people close to home, 
first. They must be heard. And they must know that they are being heard. Because they are people we are to serve. Not merely issues we have to deal with. When we're doing well, it takes a deliberate, conscious, focused effort to attend to the common good. But the more we do it, the easier it gets. If practice makes perfect, then love of nature, uh, love of neighbor, can become like second nature instinctive, natural, even enduring to those times when we're not doing so well. So much of living the spiritual life has to do with forming good habits. Being that grain of wheat that dies, dies to the concerns of self by first listening to what's going on with others and so producing much fruit. Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't I? Perhaps we have. Perhaps we've seen the hurting Jesus. Perhaps we've seen the scorned Jesus. But perhaps we've seen with eyes of faltering faith. Because we've been a bit out of the habit of dying to self. As the grain of wheat that dies, let us spend our lives as people of clean heart who glorify God by advancing the common good. Together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things, visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. Who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Remembering God's love for all people, may our care for them be strengthened as we lift them up in prayer. We pray for the church. May all the baptized respond to the grace to reach out to others according to the example of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all the nations of the world. May they have leadership that inspires global responsibility that all may prevail over COVID-19. We pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country and for all who call it home. May we be united in our resolve to promote the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all people who go unheard, especially those whose voices have been silenced by the self-interests of others more powerful. May they be strengthened by prophetic voices raised on their behalf. We pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy, hear our prayer. We pray in thanksgiving for all our blessings. May we use them as the Lord intends. We pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are affected by COVID-19, all who are sick or quarantined, health care providers and first responders, school communities, people who are struggling to get through each day, and all who are bereaved. May they be renewed in hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for an abiding respect for human life. May we marvel in the wondrous awe before our lives, from those about to be born into God's world and those about to depart from it. We pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. May we be one with them as we pray for their strength and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have died, in particular, Tim Schrader, from whom our Mass is offered, and we also pray for Leah Walchek, David Powers, and Terry Uber, as well as all, all who have died on the journey to seek refuge in a new land. May they rest in the peace of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, you call us to recognize you in our sisters and brothers and to care for those most in need. For whatever you do for the least of these, you do for me. This Lent, ignite your love in us so that through prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, we may support all who experience hunger in body, heart, and spirit. Amen.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is our duty. It is our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, <clears throat> your faithful await the sacred Paschal feasts with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity, and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on all your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Make holy then these gifts, we pray. Send your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. Giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many, for forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim. we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life. We offer you the chalice of salvation. We offer you thanks and praise that you've gathered us here, calling us worthy to be in your presence, worthy to serve you and to serve your people. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Austin Anthony, our Bishop, the clergy, the religious, and all the lay faithful, the entire people your Son has gained for you. Remember, too, our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. All who have died in your mercy, welcome to the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we too may be co-heirs to eternal life, to praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant, grant us peace in our day. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give to you. Look then not on our sins, but rather on our faith as your church, and, and grant us your peace and unity in accord with your will as you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should have turned to my roof. Only say the word of my soul.
For those participating in the liturgy from home, please join in the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of your body and blood. I love you and desire to receive you. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Never let me be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Continued thanks to all who make our live stream possible, and many thanks to all who join us via live stream. I hope that many of you will be fully vaccinated soon and feel comfortable returning to our celebration in person each week. I see, uh, well, some brand new faces and some faces I haven't seen for a while. And once the masks come off, I'm going to have to start working on names again, because after a while, the memory fails. Um, but uh, by, by 2022, we should be due once again for a new uh, photo journal of our parish, so that will help us all. During Lent, you know, we have, live we have evening prayer and Stations of the Cross uh, recorded here in our church by our parishioners available for you at any time. And many thanks to all who continue to make our two different Lenten series via Zoom possible, and many thanks to all who have participated as well. Our Tuesday community nights on Zoom, 7 p.m., continue as well. The link is found in the bulletin. Uh, if you are missing the At Home with the Word books with the Sunday scripture readings, they are available at the parish office. And a reminder that parish positions in youth and maintenance remain open. The job descriptions are on the website and in the bulletin on the diocesan website as well. I'd ask you to refer to them and to refer any people who may be qualified who you know to them as well. Many thanks for your prayers for everybody in our Guatemala mission and all over the Diocese of Helena who are served by ministries made possible by the annual Catholic Appeal. And if you have been able to participate as well in the form of a sacrificial pledge or one-time gift, thanks to you as well. We are quite close to our pledge goal. And of course, Jesus said it, we believe it, and you know what it is, love one another. And we do that by taking the best care of our neighbors, wearing masks, hand, hand hygiene, social distancing. It's important here in, in this space. Uh, the, the signs on the pews have remained, even though uh, occupancy limits have been lifted. I leave them there as, as a good guidance uh, for us to follow as best we can, because the reality is that many of us here have not yet been fully vaccinated. And those of us who are fully vaccinated can still get the virus. The only difference is, well, there's a very small chance of it. And if we do get it, it's not going to make us so sick that we have to go to the hospital. But we can pass it to others. So out of regard for the people who are here and everywhere who are not yet fully vaccinated, you know, masks, especially hand hygiene and distance, it's a very, very good idea. And we also do it in faith. It is love of our neighbor. It is good stewardship of God's gift of health to us. And hopefully, this time of pandemic um, has some things to, to teach us. I refer to this rather briefly uh, in a letter you'll be receiving from me in the week ahead. Holy Week begins with next Sunday's celebration of Palm Sunday. And it will be good to do this this year because we could not do it last year. And there will be some modifications in accord with diocesan directives. But it will be good to do this year what we could not do last year. And it will be wonderful. You are wonderful. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you 
Bless us all, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. We go in faith.